What's going on, guys? It's the Games Podcast, starring the L, Roman Long, and Antoine Coletta. On this episode, we talk about programming or games principles. Yeah, yeah. So to catch up with you guys, um, I, I know I, I didn't I didn't really tell Roman about this, but I want to do a quick intro and kind of tell you uh, why we're doing it. Like, like, like we said in the, in, the, in the bio of the first episode, we're doing this to have fun, doing this to get free information out. Um, free right now, you know, obviously all my sponsors are listed below. <laughs> but pretty much, we're going to do this as free and cheap as possible for right now. And I think this is a good starting point uh, when it comes to free information. So, yeah, I just wanted to give that first and upfront, as well as... Uh, Roman and I just did a Halloween costume together, Hans and Franz, so we're going to pump you up. <laughs> so let's get those games and let's go. Um, so, yeah, we did Hans and Franz for uh, our costume potluck today for uh, work. So as you can tell, we didn't just leave prison. We're doing this as a costume, so don't look at us. And also, as you can tell, the background is different. We're not in the office. And I think this is a great idea when it comes to podcasts because we're not stuck in one zone. We might be doing this somewhere else wherever we want. Because you know why? It's technology. We can bring it wherever we want. So without further ado, do you want to kind of brief us off before we get started? Let's do it. All right. So uh, when it comes to training and getting huge, as uh, Antoine and I are are both pursuing, uh, there are some core principles which are important to follow. Now, neither of us, I'd say, think about this. Like, on a day-to-day, say, like, am I hitting the specificity principle? Yeah. But we we follow certain principles. We use them as guidelines to dictate our, our actions. So it might be uh, a way that we help form or create our programming. It may be a way that we help troubleshoot an issue we might be running into where we're not hitting our goal in the expected time frame that we've given ourselves. So it, it's, a, it's a good time or a good tool to use for uh, reflection as well as uh, proactive behavior. So Yeah, and also a lot of, in, when he's talking about program, specificity, uh, specific workloads, whatever the kit calls be, um, a lot of organizations, like, you know, I've studied NASM, uh, SACE, um, I mean, there's a lot of different ways of saying it, but overall, um, you're going to get to that. I, I think the same conclusion when it comes to making games. That, I mean, that, that's I think overall, like Romans describing all that, but it's going to be an all different wording for everybody. But in the end, it's whatever you're going to achieve in that goal specifically for what you're doing, with either career or for sports in general, or for your leisure time. So. Yeah, these are yeah these are broad principles that yeah you don't have to use just for for um, health and fitness goals although they they are mostly designed for that you can also use them for various like social goals financial goals etc. Um, so the first one um, that I like to talk about is um, individuality. It's essentially respecting the fact that each person is an individual uh, by nature, right? Um, but also when it comes to like health and fitness in particular, because I think that that is our focus of this of this podcast yeah, is yeah. to put out health and fitness knowledge for for all the uh, oxygen breathing humans out there. So we each have different limb lengths. Antoine's like you know six foot like eleven and a half. Yeah, six foot eleven. Yeah. And I'm like five foot nothing. So <laughs> our squats are gonna look, look a little different. His femur length is a little different than my femur length. That's that's life. But there are core there are core principles we can follow within that. So respecting the individuality of each person. Uh, people have different insertions of tendons, ligaments, um, all over their bodies and each other. But there are certain when we're talking about health and fitness, there are certain core movements that if you do have the ability to be able to walk, to be able to breathe, to be able to talk, etc., then we should be able to get into a squat pattern. We should be able to get into a deadlift pattern. We should be able to get into a pressing uh, vertical as well as um, or, yeah, horizontal. Vert- horizontal or vertical. Yeah. Okay. I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was also. confused too. <laughs> Clearly. Um, so there are certain movement patterns that we all should be able to do, but also respecting the fact that somebody might squat with a, a slightly wider stance with their feet pointing up, whereas somebody might squat with 
a much tighter stance with their feet pointing straight ahead. And looking at them, you might say, hey, that looks a little different, but it's not necessarily wrong. Yeah. As long as you understand the core form principles as well, but uh, respecting the, the principle of individuality. And just because you see something, see somebody doing something different doesn't necessarily mean that it's wrong. Yeah, and, and, and to provide a little bit more context too, um, when I think of individuality, it's just me, myself, and some people have a different opinion on it as well, is I think when you get to the starting of programming, your first you know working block or your first workouts, um, or your first time in the gym, what people will do pretty much will, is go to Google search, they'll go to strength and fitness, they'll go to um, you know any page, they'll go to bodybuilding.com, and what the first thing they'll do is, okay, cool, this person's jack, the can, and all that good stuff, um, Thanks, man, for walking with the us. Um, but pretty much, like, what they'll do is they'll go to that page. They'll be like, wow, dude, I want to look like Arnold. Wow, I want to look like Roman Long one of these days. Let me do what he's doing. So keep in mind, you know, just because you see these 20-year-old somethings uh, lifting heavy weight or something else, that means you don't have to do what he, that we do, what they do, or she or he does. Um, so yeah, that's I, I want to bring a little bit more context. Uh, but yeah, anything you else want to kick that off? Yeah, no, that's that? actually a great point because like I I've fallen um, prey to that in the past where I've wanted to do what Steve Cook's doing. So I'll I'll do his program to a T. And for a beginner, there's I don't really see anything necessarily wrong with that. But also understand that. He, he might be at a certain point, or like whatever fitness you know celebrity you're following, they might be at a certain point where they see the training history that they have. They might have accumulated uh, so much training seamless over time that you might not be able to do all that. And you might be asking, like, why can't I do this? That, that's fine to like, ask those questions. Like, you might be building up to that point. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't hate on yourself, especially if you find yourself being so sore from, from your workout that you can't walk the next day yeah. or the next day or the next day or a week afterwards. Maybe you should taper down just a little bit. Um, but yeah, respect respect your, um, your individual differences from that person. Um, it's okay to follow those programs. But also, if you want to make slight deviations, then you're going to stick to it, I'd say for 8 to 12 weeks. And then, you know, retest whatever your, your specific goal is. There's nothing wrong with that, but also understand that that program might be perfect for that person but might not necessarily be perfect for you. Because you're number one in our hearts. Yeah, buddy. So since I can't probably pronounce number two, you want to go ahead and pronounce it because I'm pretty sure I messed that up earlier. Yeah. Did it, I it, or not? Uh, it, was, it, was, it was okay. I give you like a few plus. Okay. Um, all right. So the next core principle that we like to cover, and this might be the one that's most talked about in the health and fitness realm, is called specificity. The principle of specificity. So meaning the more specific you get to an actual task, so let's say my goal is to increase my one rep max. It is uh, my goal to increase my one rep max on my squat, my back squat in particular. So putting the bar high bar, so it's like on the top of the scapula, um, and you know put it on, on my back, of course. Um, my goal is 315 for the year. Right now, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm working on building up the volume to, to grow my quads, but eventually I'm going to have to get more specific to the one rep max. So I'm going to decrease the rep count and essentially count down from the 8 to 12 rep scheme where I'm at right now, and I'm going to have to get closer and closer to that one rep max scheme because I'm going to have to learn and teach my body how to put maximum force into the bar for just a single rep. So that, that takes getting as specific or as light your goal as possible. Um, another example I came up with is if you want to become better at the free throw, you've got to get hundreds, thousands of reps on the free throw. It's fine if you want to work on your aerobic endurance, uh, especially if for whatever reason it's trash or the free throw, uh, but that's not going to carry over. A jump shot is going to carry over. A, a shot from beyond the arc is going to carry over. You have to work on the free throw. And it's and it's it's funny that he uh, gives a good example because growing up I did play basketball, so that was like the one thing coaches pretty much uh, gave us an example um, to kind of be more specific with their goal. So, so let's just say you know like running running a marathon, um, you know, and you and let's just say you want to be specific about it. So what you what are you gonna do to run a marathon? Keep running. You're gonna be specific for the some general examples um, that will kind of be like this is a specific for your uh, goal and program overall. Yeah, keep increasing the distances. You know, maybe you'll have to start off at three or five miles 
maybe run three or four times in a week and, yeah. and slowly increase the amount that you run per week, so the total distance, and also the per session distance. So you might only be able to do like seven miles at a time, but you're gonna to wanna to grow that over time. And then set a realistic expectation with, with breaks in, in between. So you might have a year of training for it. Okay, so at three months, you wanna be able to run 11 miles. And at six months, you're gonna be able to run 16 miles. Break, break that up and then create a plan that is going to get you there or you expect it to get you there and then stick to it as much as possible. Make deviations only when um, you have enough uh, data. Yeah, yeah. And and obviously, like, if you're doing that specific uh, goal progression in the programming, um, you'll have enough eventually. Um, you know, obviously, Rome and I, like we've said before, we've been training a long time. So we already... Like me, I like I, I have so much data from everything, so that's gonna help you kind of grow into that. Um, and also, we've been keeping we keep doing hints. Uh, Roman kept talking, and I, that's why I was kind of smirking here and there. To the next point would be progression. Um, I, I don't know if you want to go go there already, but yeah. it was kind of it was kind of you kept on kind of going there because he kept on saying like if you want to run a marathon, let's start at two miles, then five miles, then seven miles eventually. Um, so progression definition is pretty much uh, the, the movement of progress towards that one thing. Um, I think that's an easy sum up, and that's not from dictionary.com, so don't quote me. <laughs> I, I, I'm not sure if that's even a correct like definition. Uh, but how does that? What, do you, what does that look like when it comes to training? Uh, when it comes to like lifting, lifting in your specific goal? Yeah. So uh, right now, um, so 315 is my goal on max. I have. Two months to hit it. Um, right now, I'm looking at like between like 250 to 255 for eight reps. I'll taper that down as I continue to increase the weight. Um, I'll probably start around like the, the five rep area at like 275, 285, uh, 280 pounds, and then um, slowly build up over the, the next few weeks. And then once I get to probably around like 290, 295, if I can hit 300, that'd be fantastic for five. I, I know I'll be I know I'll be ready to hit the team for one. So it's it's carefully planning it out, having contingencies if you can't hit it, knowing when you need to increase volume, knowing when you need to decrease volume, and you can base that off of uh, another principle that we'll talk in a, a couple minutes. But that's that's what um, my progression towards that specific goal looks like. Yeah, and so to take it off like a specific lifting goal, like kind of like weight. Um, now progression can mean like. You're trying to lose weight, so like I mentioned in the first episode, uh, me compete, competing for a bodybuilding show, uh, you're, you're, you're definitely you're looking at a little bit more aspects than you're lifting because when you're trying to get really lean and you're trying to lose a lot of weight and get ready for a show, or even you know you want to get ready for a wedding, you want to get ready for a retirement party, um, anniversary, anything. The like, beach for the summer. Yeah, you're going to be looking at that progression when it comes to like losing weight. Um, and, and you know, obviously, we'll talk more of it to like more episodes on what's like a healthy limit. Obviously, those aren't going to be always correct depending on who you're listening to. Uh, but you're going to follow a progression when it comes to even like losing weight. And I know that's a that's a very hot topic. I mean, everyone's like, hey, how do I lose this weight? How do I get you know at the office? Roman and I get questions all the time, like, how do I get how do I get skinny? Like, obviously, being skinnier is not always good. Um, I always think that you want to improve your muscle mass compared to like body fat percentage or body fat total wall or overall, not total wall. I don't know what that word is. Um, but pretty much like that progression towards like me with the bodybuilding show is, hey, Antoine, like, hey, you know, there's a there's an October show. I'm starting in January, February. How progressively over those months am I going to get there? And that's how we're looking at specific goals into the progression of that main goal, which is like lose weight. And it's just as simple as that. Um, you want to take baby steps. Like, I don't think, I, I, I want to harp it in. I know Roman probably harps it in, but like most of the time, all this progression is pretty much baby steps. Like we're not we're not here to say like, you're not going to get rich quick. You're not going to get lean quick. Um, you're going to do that over a time, time of your life and make a lifestyle like you're not gonna you're not gonna look like anybody or you, you know you're gonna try to be your best self overall but that progression is something smaller and you want to take those steps and even write them down like 
uh, you know, a, a lot of things that Roman does really well is, you know, the lack of physical writing down, because I think that's a good trait to still have with all this technology. Even if you have your phone, you write, you know, we all have an iPhone or an Android. You have a notepad. Write those notes down. And how are you going to progressively get there? And it doesn't even have to be about, like, lifting. But obviously, we want to keep it towards that. But, like, in life in general, you want to keep it very small and build out the band when it comes to that. Yeah, for sure. And then, and then find ways to keep yourself accountable to that plan, too. So, like, if you find yourself it's May and you want to lose 20 pounds before, you know, June, like, can you do it? Sure. Yeah. Is it the most healthy? Probably not. Yeah. Are you more likely to gain that weight back if you do it in such a manner? Yeah, unfortunately. So, it would be better to look at it like, that's a really cute thing. <laughs> so, are you suggesting them to do it? No, no detoxes here. You know, no. Roman actually, he said that, like, you drink green tea, like, what, three days in a row? Like, it'll just, like, reset your hormones. It flushes out your entire system, and then, like, the weight just starts melting yeah. off of you. Like, it's it's kind of like if you ate butter for five meals a day. It's just, you'll melt butter off of you. Just like, physically. get out a towel, folks. Probably jump in your bathtub and just wash all that gunk down the drain. <laughs> And, uh, and you can buy this program at uh, gainspodcast.com, $20 a month. Hashtag uh, uh, see you later butter. Uh, yeah, hashtag see you later butter for the coupon code, 20% off. Black Friday, early de- deals, early savings. Uh, but like, yeah, progression is just like everything you do, everything in life. You want to, you don't want to, you want to, like I said, you don't want to be on and off. You want to keep yourself accountable. And like I said, Rome, like, you know, Roman and I aren't always perfect when it comes to progression. Like, there's sometimes where, like, when I, I come in, and Roman's a very big mentor now, like, when it comes to my lifting, and I'll be like, Roman, my squats are shit. Like, hey, I just dropped 20 pounds for this, for my four or five sets I had listed. You're cool with that, right? He goes, yeah, of course, buddy. Like, who, who the hell cares? Like, you know, I mean, as, as long as I'm not skipping or I'm not showing up to the gym, you know, two weeks in a row. I, I think that's like the main focus too, is just keep yourself reliable, accountable, and like set set worth towards like a goal that's obtainable. And that's and that's that's the pr- easy, simple principle for goals itself. Yeah. And the amazing thing is like, yeah, you stay consistent and you find that like three months out, six months out, and you're you're like almost at your goal. Um, which is amazing. Um, so yeah, unfortunately, you can't see it or actualize it like day by day. It, yeah. It's it's more something, and that's why I so I track a lot of my lifts uh, via journal. Like I again, like I write it down. And yeah, I, I do it. I do it electronically. He does it still written down. So yeah. go ahead. Yeah, I, either way, either yeah. way works. Um, but both of us can go back into our history and we can see what we did maybe like a month ago, and we can know. Where, where we stand in the progress that we made in that time. Yeah, and, and, and also another thing I forgot to mention earlier when I was going on my rant, sorry about that, is I think I think you should start early. Um, most of the time, like, when, pe- when people come up to me and they're like, man, I really want to get a good summer body this year, um, but they do come to me at, like, April or May. And, like, you know, I'm, I'm always like, sorry, honey, you're kind of late. Because, like, you know, think about it this way. Like, what Roman said, you're not going to see anything day by day. It's the overall, like, I, I was, I think, well, I think I was cutting for, like, a whole year. And I didn't, I didn't, I don't even think I got to, like, 195. My goal was, like, 195 pounds. Like, I'm only 191 right now. But, like, it took, like, almost a year. Like, I mean, like, it, don't, don't, don't think a year is too long. Like, everyone always thinks that, like, the big picture, and or the small, even the small picture, but like overall, like the year is really not that big of a deal when you when people live to like almost a hundred these days, because a year is really nothing. Yeah, it flies by. Yeah, it flies by, and everything's like really obtainable when it comes to that. So, is there anything else like you can no, wanna... no, and I think that like leeway is perfectly in the next principle, which is overload. And overload is like one of those like. I was, of... Do you think of like that? What was that like? Story where the guy like carried the cat. That's perfect. And then it went to and it grew into like a full grown cow. Yeah. Would that? Would, would, That's is, perfect. Is that like a good like? Oh, I don't know if anyone's. I don't know if you could let us know what that. Do you know what that story? I can't. I 
I think it is Greek mythology. I can't think yeah. of the name of the person. If yeah. anyone can find that, please drop it down below. I would love to read up on it because it's very it's a very simple concept, but like a great thing when it comes to religion. Yeah, so essentially like what happens is it's um, like a teenage or young boy that has a, a small calf and uh, their job was to climb up to the top of the mountain, fetch water, and climb back down every day. And as the, the boy did that, the boy grew, and as the boy grew, so did the bull. So essentially... Oh, it's a bull, not a cow? Uh, I think it was. Okay. It, it either was, way, either way, they're both big old animals. Yeah. <laughs> um, it, could, it could be yeah. different for, Go like, ahead. Yeah, my bad. for a culture or whatnot. Um, but like, over time, the, um, the, the man or the boy ended up doing more and more work and was able to do more and more work because they continued to do more and more work. So that's that's a, a good way to visualize overload. It's essentially adding more weight to the bar or doing more reps or maybe more sets so that you can work towards what your eventual lifting goal is or if it's, um, yeah, it works. The principle <laughs> of overload is specifically towards like, like biochemical, like, like interactions that are happening in your body. Yeah, I was thinking like, oh, does it apply for fi financial goals? Not really. Uh, so yeah, I was going to say like, really. so if you're saying I can spend more money, like, <laughs> I can't earn more money if I keep spending, spending, spending. Oh, I guess actually like, I would not be the right person for this, but you could say like, based off of like, the amount of risk you're, you're willing to accept yeah. in like, yeah. financial markets. But anyways, that's probably not for this podcast. So you're saying I can't bench? 135 for 10 years and just go on another play eventually 25. Yeah. That's not right overload. No. You gotta add, you gotta add five pounds. You gotta add five pounds. You gotta add five pounds. Hey, you, you, you want to keep adding the weight. You want to beat him. Like Lou Ferrigno said in Pumping Iron, you want to beat Arnold. You gotta keep adding the weight. I want to beat him. Yeah, you gotta think about this now and think about it later. Exactly. So I mean, over, over overall, like overloading is just pretty much adding to your current repetitions. Um, and that could be, like we said, running, shooting free throws, uh, lifting weight, even dieting. So say if you want to lose 0.5 pounds in a month, people are like, holy cow, you want me to only <laughs> lose 0.5, uh, 0.5 pounds in a month? And then the next month, maybe do 0.75 slash one pound. Um, or even on the bench, like like from me to my fiance, you know, it's like, you know, I might bench five or 10 pounds more and she might do two and a half only, and she's like ecstatic because she knows she's doing something that's going to overload and get her bench up because that's just how overload works. Like, you don't want, like, when you're writing a book, like, you don't start off and write a Stephen King novel. You want, you write like a paper bag, like 100 pages, 50 pages maybe. You don't start off with like a whole Bible of like words. Like, that's not how, like, even this podcast, we're growing, we're. We're starting at around 30 minutes. We're probably going to grow to an hour. We're probably going to have guests on. So, you know, that's the simple principle. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I think that about covers it. Uh, so, <laughs> recovery next? Yeah. Uh, I know, ad adaptation. Adaptation. Okay, so um, adaptation and recovery pretty much go hand in or, hand. Or do you want to make a part two and just kind of fill in the rest? I don't know. Because, like, I, I mean, we still, we still have, like, three topics we want to cover, but... Do you want to throw in one more? Or? No, let's let's do that. We'll make a part two. Okay. So pretty much what we're doing right now is, like I said, we we just finished up. This is episode two, the Halloween edition. Um, spooky. Yeah, spooky pictures to follow. Um, <laughs> we are now on uh, Buzzsprout. We just got Stitcher included to our podcast. We're going to add the details coming soon. Make sure to follow Roman. On, what's your social? What's your Instagram? Your YouTube channel? Make uh, it easy. Yeah, Roman Long ten thirty one. That's Roman R O M A N Long L O N G one zero three one on Instagram and YouTube. It's just Roman Long, my first and last name. And uh, right now I'm in the What Is Strong video series. So the YouTube algorithm is like a little like funky. But yeah, just type Roman Long and What Is Strong and you should be able to find me. Yeah, in um. All this stuff is going to be posted on uh, the YouTube channel, our Instagram. So go ahead. If you want the latest news, you know, Roman and I have both have link trees. So you click on our bio. We're going to update it. No, we haven't updated it right now. We probably will by this podcast. Okay. Is out. <laughs> we'll get to it. But right now, we're, we're just happy to see people are listening. We're happy to see this is starting off really strong. And, you know, we're going to go a little bit stronger on the audio version. YouTube's a little bit easier for us. 
Um, but, you know, a lot of times no one wants to, like, watch and listen at the same time. Uh, but either way, we're going to get there. You can follow me on Instagram at Antoine Coletta, A-N-T-O-I-N-E-K-A-L-E-T-A. And you can type that in Instagram. That's my Twitter handle. Um, usually I don't really care if you follow my Twitter. Most of the time it's mostly Instagram or YouTube. My YouTube channel is the same as my full name. Um, so go ahead. Give a follow, please, if you can. It would help us out. Like I said, we're not, we're not making any money off of this. But um, also, quick note, I'm going to list some information on my YouTube, on the YouTube page and the YouTube video, too. Um, Reclaim Fitness in Mokina, Illinois. Um, they're, they're a South Suburb gym in Illinois. If you're in town or if you're in town already, make sure to go check them out. Uh, they've been nice and gracious enough to help sponsor our show um, and the podcast. So... That's very awesome to see only on our second episode. So, yeah, like I said, follow us. Stay tuned. Leave some comments, questions, concerns, ideas. Yeah. 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 So, awesome. We'll see you then. And have a great Halloween. Stay safe and enjoy the show. And get pumped up. Get pumped up. We're going to pump you up until you can't pump anymore. <laughs>